I sang that song for more than 60 years, a song of praise to Joseph Smith, the founder of the church I served as a bishop. I was a faithful Latter-day Saint. Jesus said, you shall know the truth and the truth will make you free. I realized that I was following the gospel of Joseph Smith and not the gospel of Jesus Christ. Many others have made a similar journey into an authentic relationship with Jesus. And that's what this show is all about, people who want to share their story. So if you're a Latter-day Saint seeking a genuine encounter with the Savior, we have a joyful message that we want to share with you. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Ex-Mormon Files. I'm your host, Bishop Earl, and I appreciate you spending some time with us. I'm really pleased to introduce to you Russell Johnson, who's come all the way from Nevada to share his story with us. And thanks, Russell, for coming. And Well, thank you for sharing. inviting me. Very fascinating story, too, and I think we'll have some insights here that we sometimes uh, don't get. You, uh, where were you born and where were you from? Well, I was born in Cedar City. Okay. Uh, at the time, my, dad, my mom and my dad were actually living in Beaver, but there wasn't a hospital in Beaver, so, so we they went, to, went to Cedar City. It must have been an exciting ride for mom. <laughs> well, and dad, dad was a basketball coach, so he was out of town that night. Oh. Um, but anyways, the following school year, my folks moved to Moab, and I was basically grew up in Moab. Oh, that's a beautiful time. country over there. You went to high yeah. school there. Went and, through high school. and yeah. You even started college there. Right? Um, I took oh, a few, that was at Price. Yeah, yeah okay. I actually took some classes, some extension classes through Utah State while I was in high school, yeah, but I wound up at Price. Okay. So were you born into the church then? Were your, fam were your mom and dad members? Not, well, mom and dad were members, but we were never that active growing up. Mm -hmm. um, Any particular reason, just the way it I'm, was? <laughs> I don't really know. I didn't yeah. ever talk to my folks about that. Yeah. Um, I mean, did I, you have home teachers, or were you aware from, of people from, coming and visiting? Yeah, from time to time we did have the home teachers came by. Yeah. Uh, lots of family, friends were LDS, they were members. active. Okay. Um, my, one of our family friends was a very active member. She, I remember when I was probably less than five years old, she would come and pick me up on Sundays and take me to church with her. Uh -huh. And I can't remember, I don't remember specifically, but I'm a, my sister probably went with us as well. Oh. <laughs> she was about a year and a half younger than me. So you went me. to primary and all that kind of stuff. Uh, yeah. Okay. And yeah. you uh, you actually uh, then, you took seminary at all, did you? No, I didn't. Because you weren't any... actually baptized, right, at, at age eight. Right. I didn't oh. take any seminary classes okay. in high school. Okay. Um, I did, growing up when I was in middle school age, I uh, had a friend who was active and uh, went to uh, a primary, I, if I remember right. It was yeah. in the midweek, we would go to church. Yeah, I'd go to primary a church was midweek. Yeah. Okay. Well, and then also in evenings, you had young men. You know, probably played basketball, yeah. that kind of stuff. Yeah, and, did did some basketball over the years. And, yeah, uh, I remember at times going to the the lo the orchards that the church owned. Oh, and and service pick, projects. Help pick fruit. Good for and, you. I, I <laughs> had a few of those myself over the yeah, years. Some good fruit. <laughs> yeah. Did you have a sense that the church was true? I mean, was it? It's probably all you knew, right? So it was growing up. That was all that I knew. When I thought of church, I thought of the LDS Church. Sure. Yeah. Um, I was aware that there was other denominations. There were Baptist churches and Catholic churches in town. What did you think of them? I didn't really know what the difference was. Yeah. Did you so, just assume they weren't? Up to par, that the yeah, LDS I guess, church. Yeah, I kind of kind of sense the only sense true that. church. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I uh, I knew they were there, but I don't remember even going to any weddings or anything in those churches. So oh, it, was, it was all LDS. It was all with the LDS church. Yeah, um, and. A, a kind of an interesting story. Uh, at one point, I was trying to raise money. Uh, so I was mowing lawns, and there was a man down the street. His mower broke or something, and he talked to my dad and asked if I would mow his lawn. Yeah. So I mowed the lawn, and 
when I was done, I went up and knocked on his door to tell him I was done. And when he came to the door, he was wearing a collar like a, a priest oh, or really? uh, something like that. And I didn't know, I recognized that that meant he was... Wasn't Mormon. <laughs> well, yeah, I wasn't Mormon. Yeah. But he was also carrying a can of beer, which just shocked me. Oh. <laughs> Nobody, none of the people I knew who went to church carried beer. <laughs> would carry a beer. <laughs> so that was a shocking experience for me. But, yeah, it's um, funny. So anyways, after I graduated from high school, I uh, went on to junior college at College of Eastern Utah. Okay, in Price. In that's Price. Right and while I was there, I became pretty good friends with a young man from Nevada who... Um, he was very active in the LDS church. Okay. And in the spring of that year, <clears throat> he asked me if I would go through the discussions with the missionaries. Oh, did he invite you to church too? Um, yeah, he, yeah, he invited me to church and we went through the discussions. And So you did, when he invited you to go through the discussions, you said yes? Yeah, I agreed to do that. And uh, of course you'd I, at this point, you probably still believe the church was, the LDS church was the only true church or something? I don't yeah, put I, words in your mouth, but... <laughs> yeah, I didn't, <clears throat> excuse me, I didn't necessarily, up until that point, I hadn't necessarily heard that statement. Phrase, okay. Or, um, but I just, to me, that was all I knew. Okay, so you thought so, this was a good chance to learn more about the church? Yeah, I felt like it was, it was a chance to learn more. I felt like it was something I probably should do. Okay. Um, well, what did you learn? What did they tell you? So, I don't necessarily remember much of the details. Really? Just um, that they gave me some passages to read from the Book of Mormon and various, I think some from the Bible. Yeah. Uh, passages that would back up the, the LDS doctrines. I see. And at one point, of course, they asked me to pray about it and yeah, did they give you a true. Book of Mormon to read, or did they you have it. one? Yeah. Yeah, did you do that? I did. I didn't, I can't, I never have read clear through the Book of Mormon, <laughs> uh, but I would read passages here and there as yeah. as some teaching directed me to do. Oh, yeah. Um, so my friend in college, he wound up being the person who baptized me. So you did get baptized. I did get baptized. Yeah. Uh, later that that following summer, he was getting ready to leave for his LDS mission. Uh -huh. uh, so I went to Nevada to his going away. Yeah. Uh, spent spent a weekend, I guess, in his house with his family and went to church with them. And so at that point, did you feel uh, that the church was true? I mean, did you, had you prayed about the Book of Mormon then and Joseph Smith and current prophets and yeah, I, that kind of stuff? I prayed about it. I had the burning in the bosom. And, <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't. I don't know that I was a zealous person. Yeah. Uh, but I, yeah, I felt that this must be the the true church from everything they're telling me. I had no reason to doubt that mm -hmm. there were living prophets. Um, and that I had no reason to doubt that Joseph Smith was a prophet. Okay. Um, I didn't, I would say I was biblically illiterate. I didn't know the Bible. Oh, so. I was going to ask, did, 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 what did they say about the Bible? Did the missionaries really talk about the Bible? Um, I don't really remember if they did. I remember at some point hearing statements that the Bible uh, is, that we we believe the Bible as far as it's translated correctly. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, and again, I didn't... kind of puts a hole in the whole thing. Yeah, but... <laughs> so I kind of, I would read the Bible, but in the back of my mind, there was always that question of, Can't well, really how reliable it. is it? Yeah. yeah. So always encouraging us to read the Book of Mormon. That's the, yeah. that's the big one. So you're active then and in attending church and... Yeah, so... Yeah. I was attending church uh, that summer while I was, I went home for the summer between the school years. Uh, the following year I went back to Price to Eastern Utah, uh, okay. went to to church. Yeah. I actually had three roommates who were return missionaries. Oh. They were from a town uh, not far from where I grew up. Yeah. Um, so we had some common acquaintances. Yeah. Where, and, uh, Got to know them pretty well. Um, were they good examples? Would yeah, you say? Yeah, they were. They were they good lived, guys. Lived uh, the good law. Friends. I mean, 
good Mormons, as they as yeah. you might say. I felt like they were good yeah. good Mormons. Now good you examples. also took an institute class there. What was that? Do you remember what the I honestly I don't remember. Oh, okay. It's been a few years ago. <laughs> well, yeah, I know what you mean. <laughs> but um, I I remember taking that and doing the the reading assignments that they would give yeah. me. Yeah. Um, Did you ever have a calling? Did they ever call you to do any teaching or anything? No, not that no. I remember. I remember. No. Okay. Um, so what happens next after? So. That was uh, my second year. I finished up school at Eastern Utah. Yeah. Went back home for the, the following summer. And one of my high school coaches uh, approached me one day and said, <clears throat> uh, I hear you're going on a mission. Oh. And I, I hadn't talked to anybody about that. Had you, had, had you thought about it? Um. I may have thought about it a little bit. But nothing but, you ever told anybody. Yeah, I hadn't talked to anybody. I wonder where anybody. he got that from. Yeah, it, it kind of, it upset me that, oh, did that it? this rumor was going around. Huh. Uh, not that it was a, a bad thing, I guess. <laughs> yeah. But, <laughs> excuse me. But it um, made you think a little bit? Or but it you? made me think a little bit. Yeah. And later that summer, my bishop called me in and he asked me, have you considered going on a mission? Oh. And... I told him, that, you know, I really didn't feel worthy. I just didn't feel like I was living up to the standards of the church and didn't feel I was qualified to, to, go, on to go on a mission and represent the church to other people. Oh, okay. <laughs> so um, that summer, and the summer ended, I went on to back to school. I uh, wound up going up to Utah State University where I finished my college education okay. uh, over time I just I just didn't feel I guess didn't feel satisfied in, uh, felt in the church in the church yeah so what, what do you kinda, think was missing what do you... um, looking back on it it was the relationship with Jesus <laughs> that's what yeah. we see now isn't it yeah <laughs> but you um, didn't maybe put a finger on it exactly yeah, at just, that point I just kind of felt like Spiritually, I was just didn't have a, a, a grounding, anything yeah. solid to stand on. And I just kind of drifted along, and yeah. um, so uh, over time, drifted away from the church. Okay. But in, in the back of my mind, I still felt like, well, that's the true church. If I ever come back, this will be the the church yeah. I come to. Yeah, okay. exactly. So. Um, so eventually I finished college, uh, got a job in Nevada, moved to Nevada oh, where okay. I met my wife and we got married. Oh gosh, uh, so you go to Nevada and where did you meet her? Uh, we were living in the same apartment complex so we would run into oh. each other. And was she LDS? She was raised Catholic. Oh. Um, were you going to church at all at this point? At this point I wasn't. Oh, okay. Uh, she was going with a friend of hers to a very liberal church, a, a Christian church, but mm -hmm. they were very liberal. Oh, yeah. Um, they, I remember them teaching or making statements about the Bible that they felt there were mistakes in it, <laughs> which sounds familiar. Yeah, it did. <laughs> um, and again, I still, I didn't really have any basis to, to refute that. Yeah, so I, I just, know what you mean. We really don't... I mean, as LDS, we just don't really spend much time in the Bible. So, yeah. you know, you didn't have a background in it, so, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so as we're, we're living our married life, okay. um, and we're going to this church, and we're, we were struggling. We were just, our marriage wasn't healthy. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> she, my wife... Uh, some friends of hers that were going to a Calvary Chapel in Las Vegas invited her to go with them, and so she started going with them. And she was she didn't take you, huh? At this well, point. she wanted me to go, yeah, but I was resisting. Oh, were you? <laughs> I, I was rebelling. Okay. <laughs> um, and what did she think of that? Um, she she wanted me to go with her. Yeah. Uh, she actually found out that at Calvary Chapel they offered marriage counseling. 
Oh. And so she asked me if I would be willing to go to the counseling with her. And you uh, felt like you were kind of struggling anyway with things. Yeah. And... Well, so I agreed to go. Yeah. And I, I didn't tell her this at the time, but we talked about it later. But I agreed to go just so she wouldn't bug me about it. <laughs> <laughs> True confessions. <laughs> well, I'm glad you've talked to her uh, about it but for now. So, so in, in the first... I think it was the first session we went to. Yeah. Um, the pastor said, there's no charge for this counseling under one condition. You have to go to church and you have to go together to the same service. <laughs> so I locked you um, into so, coming to church. Huh? So we did that. And uh, I look back on it now and I, I know they wouldn't, they weren't going to charge us anything anyways, anyway. But, <laughs> But what did you think of that first time you went? Uh, um, how did that compare was, with uh, your Mormon experience? It was very different than yeah. what I was used to. Yeah. Even <clears throat> even in the the liberal church we had been going to, uh, they sang out of hymnals when they would do songs. Oh, they did. Uh, they had a piano and a choir, which were things I thought that was pretty the normal. Churches. Yeah, that should yeah. be a, the way things are yeah. done in church. Yeah. This church. Um, they had a rock band, if you will. Yeah, they had guitars, guitars and, and some drums. drums. And, um, <laughs> Shit, kind of surprising at first, isn't it? Yeah. But now, what do you think of it now? Just to oh, jump ahead a little bit. Um, it's I love it. It's, yeah, I do too. Um, and it's not so much about the style of music as yeah. the the message in the songs. What about the message? What's so different? And so it's it's all about Jesus. Isn't that uh, amazing. It's honoring and glorifying him yeah. for what for his sacrifice and what he has done for yeah. us. That's so different, isn't it? It is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the other I guess one of the the big thing that struck me was the teaching, the way they they did they taught the message they would go verse by verse through the Bible. Yeah. Uh, rather than just pick a verse here and there, uh, they would start in the first verse of whatever book we were studying. And teach we would you what go it's saying. And... All the way through. Yeah. And, and they would get into, sometimes they talk about, well, the Greek meaning of this word is such and such, or the Hebrew meaning is. Yeah. And it just gave it so much more meaning, and the, the Bible came alive. Um, and also, as as my wife and I were going through the counseling, um, I just felt like the Lord was speaking to me and saying, read my word, and I'll show you the differences between Calvary Chapel and the LDS Church. And so over about a year's time, I did. I read the Bible, um, and I came to understand what Jesus has done for us, That uh, that I am not a good person just working my way to heaven, but I'm a sinner and I need I need somebody to pay the penalty for my sins. Isn't that a wonderful message? Yeah. What did you think of Jesus as uh, as LDS? Um, I didn't really understand what all he had done for us. Uh, I guess a lot of it I thought of him as as this little baby in the manger. Yeah, that's uh, one thing, isn't it? At Christmas time, the Christmas he's the story. baby. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but I didn't make the connection from the manger to the cross. No. Um, and and did you huge. ever sense, in Mormonism certainly, that, he's, that they, they teach that he's our elder brother? Right. Yeah. And that he uh, has to progress? In other words, he, he, becomes, he becomes a god because he's been obedient. Yeah. I didn't... I didn't understand yeah. all that, I guess. I mean, I didn't, <laughs> I was a Christian, I just can't even imagine setting Jesus aside like that and just saying, okay, well, you've got to progress, you've got to come and get yeah. a body, and you've got to, uh, you've got to be obedient. I mean, he's God, so yeah. it's just such yeah. a different doctrine, it's yeah. a different Jesus, isn't it? Instead of him progressing towards Godhood, exactly, he's God who came down to yeah. live among us. Yeah, and uh, I, I never understood that. And yeah. I'm sure you didn't either, it sounds no, like. Yeah. No, I didn't. Yeah. So the Bible's meant a little bit more to you? Oh, it does. I, 
before when I would read the Bible, I would just read a passage here and there as I might need to do for some teaching we were going through. Yeah. But now it's part of, it's just something I do every day. It's part of me. And as I, as I watch the news, as I go about my life, um, I'll see things or hear things and I'll like, oh, that reminds me of this, this <laughs> verse or something. Something out of the Bible. Yeah. yeah. It's where the gospel is. I mean, it's sufficient, you know, in whatever yeah. version people, and there's maybe a couple of versions that are, are out of kilter, but yeah. almost all the versions, King James or whatever, they, they teach that gospel message, uh, yeah, the gospel of Jesus Christ and the gospel of grace yeah. and what he did for us that we couldn't do for ourselves. So yeah. it's a great message. Yeah. Well, so did you, uh, you, you kept going to church and, and your wife, she kept going, I bet she was thrilled with yeah. and the marriage got better the i marriage hope got i trust better. yeah so <laughs> still together now <laughs> st still together we just celebrated 24 years together oh that's awesome um but yeah she was uh very happy uh, on november 24th 1999 i prayed to receive jesus as my lord and savior and i can look back and see that was a definite turning point in my life yeah. uh, what happened um, I can't say that I had some great experience. <laughs> I just, um, I started to find myself more content with situations. Really? Uh, I just had a peace. I feel more uh, understanding of other people. Um, I understand that the only difference between me and someone who's not saved uh, whether they're LDS or uh, whatever they believe. The only difference is I've asked Jesus to forgive my sins. Yeah. Um, that doesn't make me better than them. Um, but you accepted him and his sacrifice. And, yeah. Yeah, that's such a glorious message. Yeah. So you feel like that was your born-again moment that you I just... Do. Yeah. And yet, yeah. even at that, uh, our faith is in what Jesus did for us, and yet we continue learning, don't we? I mean... We do. Yeah. I mean, the more you read the Bible, the more little nuggets and things come out that teach us and yeah. kind of help cement our, our foundation of Jesus. And, yeah. 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 It just, it amazes me to think that here Jesus was with the Father. Yeah. And he, he humbled himself to come down uh, to take a body of flesh and live among us. Right to go to the cross and bear the penalty for our sins, to, to pay that, that penalty that we could never do. Well, you kind of mentioned to me a little bit about judging people. Do you feel like, how, does that, how is that different now for you as a Christian compared to being a Mormon? Um, as a Mormon, I feel like uh, I, would, I would compare myself to other people and when I would see people doing whatever, living a sinful life, yeah. uh, I would kind of look down upon them. I would feel like, well, you know, I may be a sinner. I may be doing things I shouldn't be, but at least I'm not, not doing, doing that. that. <laughs> Isn't that funny? And, um, and yet, uh, and you feel like it's sometimes that you're not doing enough. I mean, you, yeah. you feel that way. You're kind of judging yourself in a way, too. You yeah. say, I'm just not doing all I should do. And and there's a burden there, isn't there? There is. Yeah. Um, it's, I don't know how to explain it. it. My wife and I were talking a couple of days ago, and it's kind of like, uh, I imagine two couples who are engaged to get married. <clears throat> so the one couple, the, the, the future husband goes out and picks out a wedding ring for his future wife, and he gives it to her, and he says, you know, Here's this ring. Now I expect you to compensate me as much as much as you can, pay me back or whatever. <laughs> um, and that just doesn't seem like a very good foundation to to make a marriage with. But the other couple, uh, I picture the husband giving the ring, not not and not just stopping there. He's continually sacrificing for her, and loving her and like loving Jesus her. loves the yeah, church. Yeah, and that's what we see. Jesus, yeah, yeah he gave himself for the church. Well, yeah, and that's what the free gift is, the gift of, 
And I say it so often, but it's so such a simple gospel, and yet uh, for me it's so godlike because it, it it just accept what I've done for you, in yeah. a free gift, and and you can't earn that. You you have a couple of scriptures that you wanted to share, and I think they tie into our discussion a little bit. Okay, this is from John. <clears throat> excuse me, John thirty one and thirty two. Uh, Which chapter? Is uh, I'm sorry, is chapter eight. 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 Uh, then Jesus said to those Jews who believed on him, If you continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. And then, so I feel like um, we, should be, we shouldn't be afraid to seek the truth. No. Uh, Jesus claimed to be the, the way, the truth, and the life. And in, in Jesus, we have that freedom. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, we have that freedom. We don't have to live up to a bunch of rules yeah. and standards. And now, have you learned more about Mormonism? Did you have to kind of go through a thought process about what you did believe in the Book of Mormon or Prophets and Joseph Smith? Or Yeah. Did you? Um, our pastor at Calvary Chapel, uh, he actually did a series of teachings on LDS beliefs. And through that, I learned a whole whole bunch of things that I didn't no, or didn't, didn't really understand, understand before. before, and that caused me to really examine what I believe and consider. Comparing the Bible the, to to Mormon doctrine, and right. it's it's quite shocking. It is. It's not there. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anything anything you care to share or remember about that? Um, I remember one of the things that he said that. Um, I think should, we should take this view. And that he said, as I teach you these things, some of these things to a non-Mormon are going to sound strange. Uh, don't laugh, but understand that they, this Mormon. is what they know. Yeah. This is what they were raised with. Well, gosh, we've only got a minute left. Anything you want, excuse me, want to say to family or friends? or? Um, first off, I would like to say I, uh, I don't want to sound critical. Uh, yeah, of, we love of Mormons. Our Mormon <laughs> friends and family. Right. I still have many friends and family that are Mormon. Uh, but don't be afraid to seek the truth. Uh, the truth always has the best argument. Uh, so <laughs> That's a good truth. Point. We shouldn't be afraid to seek the truth, and Jesus is the truth. And, and maybe trust the Bible, too. Trust the Bible. Because it, it does contain the gospel of Jesus Christ. It what's will get us to heaven. Yeah, yeah. I, I fully believe that. <laughs> well, Russell, thanks so much for coming and sharing. And you have a delightful wife, and I appreciate her support. Uh, isn't it nice to have, have Jesus in your life? Amen. <laughs> thanks, and we'll see you next time.